right now we're about to finalize the film. So we've, you know, pretty much like picture sound. So producing is just like everything, you know what I mean, from a film. So I started with raising the money for it and um and then you know gearing up getting all the crew and then shooting the film in like two weeks and then all the post-production process and then here we are one more day with a finished film soon yes i'm excited how did i find my director i first thought i tried to ask a lot of different people who they you know who i knew hey you know would anybody interested in directing a film and then i got a bunch of reels and submissions and i posted some stuff on like mandy jobs or um and craigslist and production hub and um, even a different like you know a couple e-blasts like different organizations and then the, i mean i probably got over definitely over 100 submissions slightly under like not not too close to 200 but somewhere around there and i went through like every single email every single um real you know and and then I found someone who I thought well I found two people it was, it was a man and a woman I really wanted a female director Why? um well just because the, the the lead act the lead was a female and I thought that there's not a lot of um female directors you know and if I knew how to direct I would have I would have directed it but I have no idea what that means so um but the female directors I met with just didn't I just didn't think they they understood the story as much as the male director that I found who I really liked a lot. So, and I found him through the USC job board, <clears throat> which is another great place to find, you know, really talented people who, you know, may be willing to work within your budget. <laughs> you know, it's kind of hard. I had no idea what I was really looking for. I was just looking for, you know, like, a, cause even like the story that I saw of him, it was like, I forgot the name of it. I can't pronounce it, but it was, he directed it in Thailand. So it wasn't even a story I would necessarily watch, you know, uh, the story, but it was something about like the way the actors were on the screen, you know, and, um, some of their acting, it just seemed like, I don't know, it was, it, it's, it's kind of hard. It's so organic. It's not like something you can really explain. But I just know that after seeing a bunch of different reels, this one seemed to resonate. And I also think that some of it, even like the lighting, even though the, the director is not in charge of the lighting per se, you know, that's like the DP, the director of photography. Um, but your director is sort of overseeing it. So if he is okay with lighting that didn't really work, you know, that's something that, you know, I kind of look for. So if it was like too dark, especially when, you know, most of the people in the film are African American. So they have a little bit browner skin tone. So lighting is really important. So, um, you know, something like lighting, even though that's not necessarily, like I said, a director, you know, thing, he should be overseeing the whole process. Um, lighting was number one. Lighting, lighting, lighting was really critical. And then just someone that I thought could work within our budget, number one, and be able to tell a story um, visually, you know, and then probably the biggest thing with the DP is someone that understood our time constraints. So they have to be able to set up very quickly. I mean, we shot this film in two weeks, so you have to be able to, you know, you have to be somewhere on time. So did he show up to our meeting on time? We had people that were like two minutes late for the for the interview. That's just not going to cut it. Two minutes is his dollars. So, you know, um, someone that understood, you know, independent filmmaking and how quick you have to go. And so he had experience. He had, I don't know how many, he, he, did, he hadn't DP'd a lot of films, but he had worked on a lot of sets, like in Gaffer and other positions. So he understood the independent world and how quickly you have to be. And even things like in one of the interviews, he was saying that he wanted to make sure he had one of his guys with him because they know where everything is on his truck, you know, so that they could quickly get to it. So even something like that, that, you know, really matters. Someone that, again, knew how quickly we had to go, you know, and I really wanted to work with people that understood, you know, there cannot be any drama. You're going to have drama, but at least to understand that, like, we don't have time for a lot of disagreements and things like that. So you have to be able to understand, to take a, a direction in order and go with it. But you also have to have someone that's uh, authoritative enough to, like, speak their mind. So a good example is, you know, I didn't really realize how important so many elements are in the filmmaking process. For instance, like... Uh, like wardrobe. To me, I kind of thought like wardrobe is kind of like whatever, you know what I mean? Like they just make sure your actors look good. But it's so much more than that. You know, they, they have to look for continuity and make sure that, you know, if this scene, we shot the scene on Tuesday, but now we're continuing the scene on Thursday, we have to make sure Vanessa, uh, Vanessa Simmons, who plays the, the lead role in the film, to make sure her earrings are, are on, you know, because it will be weird if her earrings aren't on and they were on two seconds ago. So something like that. And, you know, she'd come up to me, our, our wardrobe person would come up to me and say, you know, 
Angela and asked me a question. I'm like, I can't deal with this right now. She's like, no, you will deal with this right now. This is very important. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, so someone who could definitely know when it's important to tell me to get my attention as opposed to just, you know, calling on me for every little thing. Because when you're a producer, you're wearing so many hats. You know, just, I mean, there's so much going on and everyone is coming to you. I had a producing partner, too, who was uh, Tangie Miller, who was with me on set throughout, throughout it. But even still, two people, it, it's just a lot going on. You're dealing with, you know... And even in the very beginning, you're still dealing with contract, you know, make sure you got everyone's contract in, even though you've already started shooting, you're dealing with their agents, the managers, you know, everything from craft services to just, I mean, it's just, there's just so much. <laughs> Hair, you know, and, and there was a point where I thought, well, um, how important it is to have two people, you know, at least two people in independent film, because you can have someone that's the greatest stylist in the world working on your star, but when your star is on set, and she's got to get the next person ready. You have to have someone there watching for whoever is on, you know, set to constantly make sure the hair. And if she's got to take two moments to come check hair here, then that's slowing us down over here. So then the next scene is going to be delayed. So just making sure that you have multiple people in that area. I think um, I learned how important that was. And then um, I think... Uh, I think for the most part, everything else I, I understood sort of like, okay, this is important, you know, sound. I also, I had met with a lot, before producing this film, I met with a lot of other producers and directors that had did, that, that produced an independent film, similar to one I was making. And so I wanted to make sure I talked to them about the mistakes they made and things like that. And one of the things that kept coming up was sound. You know, they said, if you don't have good sound, you don't have a movie. So it's really important that, you know, your sound is on point. So I understood that. So I was, you know, when I interviewed the sound person, you know, I was really into that. And then, you know, even on set, I would watch the dailies and make sure the sound was okay so that I knew what I was getting. And so that is actually one of our least concerns. I mean, like during our post-production part of like our ADR and stuff, we had to do some ADR just because of natural things. But, um, but the sound for the most part was, you know, really, really good. So we didn't have to re recreate a lot of that. So, so that was good. So I, I took a lot of time to prep, do some prep work talking to other people to see what mistakes they made so I would not make those ones. But I made new ones, I'm sure. <laughs>